World War II was difficult on football in America, particularly at universities. Nearly 200 campuses across the country would cancel football prior to the 1943 season. From Harvard in the Northeast to Baylor in the Southwest, the entire nation was affected. When Coach Elmer Burnham gathered his squad in the spring of 43, less than 50 men showed up for drills. The 1942 season had been very poor for Purdue as they finished one and nine and scored just 27 points all year. And several starters were headed for active duty rather than another year of college, including projected starting halfback and future NFL Hall of Fame coach, Hank Stram. But by summer, the season was no longer in jeopardy thanks largely to an influx of new talent, the men of the United States Navy's V-12 Officers Training Program, a group that would include players from around the country who had already tasted success and would lead Purdue towards perfection. Ninety-three men turned out for the first team practice on July 15, 1943. Thirty of them had earned varsity letters the previous season from schools other than Purdue. And one, Lou DiFilippo, was coming off a season with the New York Giants. It was a talented group to be sure, but one that had precious little time to come together and form a cohesive unit. Among the experienced newcomers were 12 players from the University of Illinois including the front-line trio of Alex Agassi, Mike Cassip, and John Jennis. Fullback Tony Butkovich also came from Illinois, while quarterback Sam Vacanti was one of five players from Iowa on the squad. There were 10 players from Missouri, six of whom had lettered for the Tigers the previous year. That familiarity would help as the Boilermakers got ready for a challenging opener on the road against Great Lakes Naval Station. One of several military institutes to pop up with the war, Great Lakes had a good season in 1942 and was looking to be a national powerhouse again in 43. As the 1943 season kicked off, the Boilermakers still had a lot of unanswered questions. Decisions made by Burnham on the lineup seemed solid with a front line featuring the experience of DiFilippo, Agassi, Jennis, and Cassip, among others. Butkovich and Vacanti were joined in the backfield by Stan Dubicki and Lou Rose, one of the few holdovers from the 1942 Boilermaker squad. Great Lakes took advantage of an early mistake, recovering a Purdue fumble, scored a quick touchdown, and took a 6-0 lead. The Boilermaker defense found its footing and began shutting down the Blue Jacket offense. The Purdue offense reeled off 16 straight points en route to a 16-6 lead at the half. Both teams found the end zone once more in the second half, but in the end, it was Purdue 23, Great Lakes 13. The Boilermakers would head home with a season opening win, an impressive road victory over a very good team. Great Lakes would finish the year at 10 and two and an upset of top ranked Notre Dame on the season's final day. As for Coach Burnham's Boilermakers, a showdown with Marquette in week two awaited as they embarked on one of the greatest seasons in school history. 